You all know about time management, just you probably don't know that you know about time management. And the purpose of today really is that you're going to learn from each other and you're going to learn a lot and you're going to be able to be empowered by what you know. My name is Sam Linworth, Dr Linworth, and I am a lecturer in science communication. And what I've been doing recently is with my colleague Jenny Blake at the University of Manchester, we've been investigating the role of the expert. So this is based on some of Dweck's work on mindset. So particularly if you have an expert at the front of the classroom versus a facilitator at the front of the classroom, what effect does that have and what difference is there between the two of them? We've done this in a multiple of different ways and one of the ways that we've done it is by looking at soft skills workshops. So things like time management, argument construction, critical thinking and presentational skills, that kind of stuff. So what we've done is we've run one workshop with a expert-led approach and one workshop with a facilitator-led approach and then we're gathering the feedback and we're doing that actually for a number of workshops so that we can compare and contrast and see whether the students learn more, learn less, learn differently and really just trying to explore this different research area to see what the effect is. And then we're also working with academics at MMU and the University of Manchester effectively to parachute in a couple of these facilitator-led approaches to their teaching delivery to see what effect, if any, it has on their courses without changing too many of the variables so that we still have a valid scientific experiment because at my heart, I am still a scientist. The reason I want to explore this is that mainly, I actually hate just the sound of my own voice. So when I'm, when I'm in a lecture, I'd far rather, in a lecture or a seminar or a tutorial, whatever, I'd much rather the students work experientially, work with each other to develop their own learning patterns, to find out what they want to find out. And my role really is just a facilitator. I'm not an expert, I don't have all the answers really to anything. I've got a few answers to a couple of questions that are probably not that useful. But what I am there for is to be able to help provide structure and to be able to ask the right questions. So why I really want to do this study is because I think it's important with, certainly with soft skills, that the students already know the answers, they already know how to manage time effectively, they know how to communicate, they know how to work as a team. But my role as a facilitator is to help pull that out and to show them, look, you know how to do that, you have this required skill set, just demonstrate amongst one another and find out from one another your experiences on that particular issue. So I think hopefully the research will show that the facilitator-led approach leads to more interesting forms of learning. And basically, I'm hoping to use that to reinforce what I already do and to effectively put some pedagogic theory behind and reasoning behind my personal choices in teaching. So when I am delivering in a more facilitator-led approach, there'll be some literature now. Um, I mean, obviously there is already literature on the subject, but there's a specific study then that I've done and that I've been involved with as to why I'm teaching in this particular manner. So I'll give you three or four minutes per table to come up with an idea and to nominate someone in the group to then feed back that idea and that our prizes for the most original idea and the idea I like the most. Okay, so you've got three minutes to come up five pounds, five hundred pounds to spend on whatever you want to bring you the most enjoyment. How would you spend that five pounds? The whole process is quite interesting and we don't really know what's going to happen. I have a suspicion that it may be that the expert-led approach is just as valid as the facilitator-led approach, but that in and of itself is a result. Because what we've been very careful to do is not to have a expert-led approach with a very, very different teaching style to a facilitator-led approach. And I think the most important thing with any of this is that it's just going to enable me and my colleagues to reflect on our own teaching practices. So what we're doing is we're ever so slowly moving forward, assessing ourselves, reflecting, how have we moved forward, why have we moved forward, how will that affect our students, why will it affect our students, and looking at it in a, in a personal level, in an institutional level, and beyond. And I think it's just a really great opportunity for me and my colleagues to look at our own practice and to test out a few ideas, and ultimately to benefit our students, ourselves, and our future students as well. Thank you for watching this Good Practice Exchange film. 
You can find lots more teaching ideas and resources on our website.